Hello everyone, welcome to my today's video CyberArk Lab series. Today's video is going to talk about path solution design consideration. When we got the CyberArk path solution project, um, we have something to think about it before you can work on. There's uh, 11 major points in my mind. I put it in here. I'm gonna talk all of them one by one. So first is a system requirement. You need to think about uh, your server specification. How many accounts you're gonna handle in, how many systems, and how many users in your environment. Especially when you think about uh, the PSM recording you need to think about the vault storage and also you need to think about PSM licensing and the CPU memories for your PSM server you also need to think about uh, what gonna put into your project scope what it will be out of your project scope what is your break class process if there's any urgent thing happening what you gonna get into your Vault environment to fetch the credentials you need it. Other than that, you need to think about uh, the solution is going to be on cloud version or on prem version. CyberArk is providing cloud privilege management solution as well. You don't have to build your on prem component server one by one. You just need to create a couple of connectors to it. Other than that, you probably need to plan in some for LDAP integration, MFA, SIM solution integration, HSM, ticket system, NTP, PKI, SMTP, those kind of stuff. Security requirements, fundamental hardening process, OS hardening, application hardening. All those can be in your system requirement design documentation. Second is the user management. When I'm talking about the user management, I'm talking about the how you gonna control in your access for your users. You may need to think about your application rules. For example, those users gonna access your CyberArk applications, accessing PVWA, Vault, CPM, OS system, those users, you have to create in the groups. For example, you need to have uh, you need to have Vault administrators. Those users will be directly logged into your Vault using Vault client. So usually we will not using LDAP groups, we were just creating those native CyberArk accounts. It also can consider your part of your break graph process. Other than that, you need to think about the auditors and the users. So auditors to auditing your application access and the end user need to access the vault. Those can be your ODAP group or AD groups. Other than application roles, you need to think about the safe roles. Uh, you need to have uh, end user permanent, end user ad hoc, those groups. Though all of those can be in the LDAP group for easy management. And you also need to think of approvers, automation users, uh, business auditors, guest users, or all those different business users. 
eventually you want to draw a diagram or into a spreadsheet to map all those CyberArk users or groups roles to your access permissions. The third consideration is your safe designs. For your safe design, you need to think about your safe structure and name convention. Also, safe access modules. You need to think about uh, which safe gonna be designed as a shared safe, and uh, which safe gonna be designed for personal usage. Usually, in most enterprise, you probably using both of them. You mixed solution. You definitely will have some shared safes for your admins. Also, you want to have that personal saves for specific their own account. After the safe design, um, then you need to have your master policy design. The master policy should reflect your organization's IT security and password policy. So it's a very clear design. So you can put into your master policy in PVWA. Platform design as well is similar like a safe design. You need to have a name con convention. You need to think about the names, uh, platform structure as well, how to uh, platform settings, and uh, also exceptions. Those will be documented for all your platforms. For workflow design, you need to Think about the approvals, creating approval groups for different uh, use cases, and uh, what is just in time access. Um, do we need a dual control? And how do you integrate it with ticket system and integrate it with a uh, email SMTP system and creating the email alerts or notifications? You also need to think about the auditing workflow. Um, you can export your vault reporting data to uh, MS SQL Server, and uh, you can give the auditor to uh, design their MS SQL query to pull out the raw data to see. During the workflow design, you may also think about the PTA integration, you may want to integrate the PSM and the PTA to see your sessions, session recordings. For the account design, um, you need to consider the account name length restriction for Windows, Linux, how long it can be for your account when you designing your past solution, you're going to create in all kinds of uh, application accounts, system sharing account, root account, and distribute it uh, all in, into all your systems and create it in your all your systems. So when you need to design them well to make sure when you see the account, you know what is the purpose, what is the usage, and is the service account or it's a non-human account or it's just a personal account, admin account. Account design also, you need to think about how to onboarding your account. It can be automated account creation, onboarding, and the rotation. You also can use the account feed, which is in discovery, um, pro discovering feature to discover your Windows local account, domain account, service and the scheduled task account. Unix local account and also they can discover SS key and their uh, public key and private key. You may also consider in using the bulk uploading to do your onboarding account onboarding process. You can use your CSV file to onboard in a large amount of accounts in one time. You also can use uh, auto detection 
So just monitoring your system and once they found a new account, they will automatically onboard in that. It's going to support in uh, Windows local account, VMware, Unix, Linux guest machines, VMware EXS host root account, local domain service account, application account based on the directory queries. The eight items we need to consider in during the design process is uh, diagrams, network traffic diagram, architecture diagram. Those can be combined together. You need to consider in your firewall ports in the network traffic diagram. And the traffic direction is either one way or two ways, the traffic. And uh, you need to include in all your components into your traffic diagram, for example, the NTP servers, AD, DC, your target server, uh, database server, cloud environment, or, or scene envi environment and ticket system. So those all need to be well documented into your network traffic diagram or architecture diagram. Number nine consideration is authentication. Um, when you designing your path solution, privilege account security solution, you also need to think about the MFA, 2FA. For sure, the local native CyberArk account will not be enough for your security environment to use. You have to use MFA, which is required multiple or at least a two factor authentication. Just using one authentication, for example, just using AD account is not enough for your end user to log in, especially when they trying to use those uh, sensitive administrator account. You want to have two, two FA to be in place. So in that case, you need to think about that first factor for your PBWA and then the second factor for your vault access and also you need to think about the non-web client authentication for example um, those uh, native clients Oracle DBXS MS SQL client or SSH party client how you gonna use in those non-web client authentication number 10 is uh, other features consideration um, you may think about a uh, PTA for your advanced features. Uh, during the PTA design, you need to think, trying to get a license. You can to integrate it with other component PSM, and also you may want to plan in to integrate with your endpoint security, um, endpoint privilege management, or on-demand privilege manager. Those kind of endpoint security you may considering in your project, in your design. The last thing and think about that when you design your PIS solution is you need to identify your use cases. Um, after you have all your design clearly from one to 10 mapped out, then you can create in your use cases. Um, for example, your workflow, uh, deal control, approval, this can be into your user okay, use cases um, when you design in your integration with LDAP, with SIM, with NTP and MFA, all gonna be in your use case. You need to verify those design one by one. Uh, if you have clustering, load balancing um, design as well, then or DR designing for your vault. Uh, you have multiple PVWA, PSN, multiple CPM designing, and then you have to test them out one by one. Um, for your platform, you have multiple platforms for sure. You Maybe one for DB, one for ESXi, virtual environment, one for cloud, and then local admin, domain admin, those are all going to be included in your use cases and the test cases. So that is 
all design consideration in my mind. Um, I have a post in my blog to quickly summarize all of the consideration I talked about today um, and keep updating it. Um, again, this design is just for a small or a medium environment. It's not for a large company. Large company design is going to be much complicated. You're going to have multiple path solution in place, one for test, one for production, one for development, one for special security environment. So multiple and geographically design across the multiple countries. So those are going to be increasing your design's complexity which is not discussed in this. This is just for one path solution with very small environment, a couple of thousand or uh, maybe 10,000 accounts, a couple of hundred users, um, this kind of environment. I hope this video is useful when you start thinking about the design your path solution. If you have any other suggestions, opinions, please leave a message to me. Thank you for watching.